Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us. Today I'm at Chicago Midwinter and I'm at the Pulp Dent booth. Today I am going to be talking about two of their products from the Embrace line, the fluoride varnish and the sealant. Before I get started with a hands-on demonstration, I want to talk to you about each of the products. So the first product is Pulp Dent's Embrace Varnish. Um, this is a really good product. It is a 5% sodium fluoride varnish with CXP technology and you're probably thinking, what does that mean? You probably think it's chlorhexidine, but it's not, okay? So this is a xylitol coated product, meaning, what do I mean by that? So you have your calcium that is coated with the xylitol and you also have your phosphate that's coated with xylitol. And what happens is that when you place this product in the mouth, the xylitol goes away. And so what happens is that the calcium and the phosphate actually get to date one another. They come together, okay? And so what happens with this, in addition to the fluoride, is that you make more of what's naturally in your saliva more bioavailable. Another great thing about this product is that it tastes good. So that's really, really important. It goes on with a really thin layer and it doesn't contain any BPA or uh, this GMA. So that's really, really important when we're dealing with parents or just people in general who are really concerned about what's going into their mouths. The next product I'm going to talk to you about is the Embrace Sealant. Um, like your Embrace Varnish, it does not contain any BPA, any bis GMA, so that's really good. Um, this product does not contain the calcium, but it does contain phosphate and it also contains fluoride. I would say the most exciting thing about this product is that this sealant can be placed on a moist tooth surface. And that's really, really important, um, especially if you're a hygienist, you're working by yourself, and you know you need five to six arms sometimes to hold the cotton rolls and to hold the suction and to make sure your patient is staying still. Sometimes that tooth surface can become moist. Uh, some other great features about this product, well, it definitely integrates uh, with the tooth the moment that it's placed, so you get a margin-free seal, which is really important. This also helps to eliminate the micro-leakage, and with the addition of the phosphate and the fluoride, you constantly get those ions that are released and recharged, so you have this going on for your tooth throughout the duration of the sealant. So I'm now going to get started with a product demonstration. So before placing any sealant on the tooth, you want to always make sure that you have a clean surface. So by this time, you would have already performed your hygiene services. You would have always already polished the tooth. If there's an instance where the patient has been reappointed for the visit, you just want to make sure that that tooth surface is clean. So whatever uh, profi paste that you would normally use to clean the surface, you want to make sure that you do that. I always recommend the use of a tapered profi brush to really get down into those occlusal surfaces and clean them. Once you've cleaned the tooth surface, you want to make sure that it is completely rinsed well with water, okay? You definitely want to rinse it well with water, and then you want to dry the tooth surface. With this product, you still want to make sure that you are going to go ahead and apply your etch. So a um, couple of things that I want to mention about applying etch, and I'm going to do a, a demonstration here. When I first learned how to place sealants, and that's a really interesting story for another day, I wasn't taught the appropriate way to apply the etch. So this is what I would do when I would apply the etch. This is what the tooth would look like. And if you're thinking, oh my God, she did a great job. No, I didn't. This is not how you want to place etch on the tooth. You want to apply your etch like you would normally apply your sealant. You want to make sure that you're only getting it into the grooves and into the areas that you plan to seal. So let's apply this etch appropriately. We have a little bubble there, but we're going to try to get that out. So all of the grooves, all of the fissures, this is where I have that material. Now, if you're working on a tooth that happens to have a lingual groove um, or a buccal groove, a buccal pit, and you are going to place the sealant there, you want to make sure that you apply the etch to that area as well. Um, you want to make sure that you're following the manufacturer's instructions for use, um, depending on the etch that you use. So if it says to leave it for 10 seconds, 20 seconds, you want to leave it for that amount of time, and then you definitely want to rinse it off. Because this is a live demonstration and we don't have authorization to use live patients, um, instead of rinsing this off, I'm going to wipe it off with my gauze. So we're going to pretend that this is all my water and I'm really rinsing this tooth surface off, getting it nice and clean. And I'm going to blow my air. So I'm blowing my air. And the tooth surface now is nice and clean. 
So at this time, you still want to make sure that you're isolating your surface. You want, of course, want to make sure you isolate it before you're etched. Um, but you definitely want to make sure that it's isolated at this time. So people use different methods for isolation. Sometimes you can use your finger, you can use cotton rolls, you can use gauze. You may use uh, cotton squares, depending on how juicy your patient is, you may want to use all three. So next I'm going to apply the sealant. Now it's important to note that with this sealant, it comes in two shades. It comes in off-white and it also comes in a natural color. So I'm going to actually apply both so that you can see what they look like on the tooth surface. When you go to apply your sealant, I always recommend that you have a sturdy fulcrum. That keeps your hand steady and it allows you to apply the material directly into the uh, small, tiny area. So I'm going to be using off-white. Now before I proceed, what I wanna do is that I wanna make sure that I extract a little. Um, if I push too hard, because it's hard to come out, if I push too hard, I'm afraid what will happen is that I'm going to get a lot of sealant to fall on the tooth and that's not what we want. Um, another thing that I want you to be mindful of is that when you go to pick up your sealant material in an office, if it currently has a tip on it, you wanna replace that. Um, we need to maintain our infection control protocols. So I've been able to push out a little bit. I'm gonna apply it to the tooth surface. You only want a little bit. just a tiny, tiny amount. Now, one thing that's important is that you wanna go back and make sure that you don't have any access. So sometimes you can use an explorer to make sure you get the sealant material where it needs to be. I would also recommend the use of a micro brush to go through these areas. What the micro brush will do is pick up any excess material on the tooth that you don't necessarily need, okay? So I've applied the sealant. Next, you want to go ahead and light cure. I would always recommend that you have your settings preset so that all you have to do is press the button. And so I'm gonna go ahead and light cure. And in this instance, I'm gonna light cure for about 20 seconds. Okay. We now wanna go back and check the sealant. So you wanna use the opposite end of an explorer if you've used it to go around with the sealant because you don't wanna put a wet sealant material on top of an already bonded sealant. So just gonna go back and check and it looks like I have a perfect seal. Okay, the next thing you wanna do is that you wanna make sure that you check your patient's bite. So you would, at this point, you would normally take some articulating paper, have your uh, patient bite down and make sure that the sealant is not too high. If it is, at that point, there needs to be an adjustment. So I use the off-white. I'm going to use the natural neck so that you get an idea of what it looks like. And once again, I'm gonna extract a little bit on my gauze. Okay, we get some coming out. So, here we are. Okay, I'm gonna take my Explorer once more. Make sure I'm able to get the sealant and all of the tiny cracks, screws, fissures. Again, at this point, if you had like a lingual groove or buckle groove or buckle pit, you wanna make sure you're getting some of the material in there as well. Okay, we're gonna light cure again. Here we go. We're gonna start. Okay. So again, we're gonna do this for about 20 seconds. Um, while we're waiting for this to cure, I just do wanna add, you wanna make sure that you have everything that you need before you get started. You wanna have it lined up neatly, um, easily accessible so you don't have to twist and bend. We still have to be mindful of our ergonomics. And you can see that we now have both our natural and our off-white on. I'm just gonna go back and check, okay. And I'm not quite sure if you can see the difference between the white and the natural. The natural definitely blends well with the tooth, but the white, um, and this is a typodont, so. Um, but you can still see the white a little bit. Some people prefer uh, colored sealants just because they want to see their work. Okay, um, anytime you apply a sealant in each subsequent visit, you wanna make sure that you check the margins of that sealant. You wanna make sure that they're still intact. But again, one of the benefits of using the Embrace Sealant line is that it definitely integrates with the tooth so you have that tight, perfect seal so you can avoid any of that micro leakage. Now typically after we place a sealant, you always wanna protect the tooth with a varnish. And we talked about the varnish earlier. 
So what I'm going to do is get my micro brush. Uh, a few things you want to note when applying any varnish, you want to make sure that the surface is dry. That's always really important. You always want to make sure you read the manufacturer's instructions for use as well. Um, many of the sealant materials, they migrate well and they have great flowability. So you no longer have to place the varnish on the lingual surface of your teeth. It's appropriate for you to just apply it on the facial surface of the tooth. So I'm going to get me a little bit of varnish here and then I'm going to hold a piece of gauze in my hand. And why is that? Once you apply the varnish to the tooth and you go back to dip your brush, you want to make sure that you wipe the brush off on the gauze because you don't want saliva that's already on the micro brush to contaminate the varnish that you have separately. So I'm going to get me some varnish. I'm going to coat my brush. Okay. And I'm going to pick the type of up a little bit. You guys have to tell me if I'm still in the camera. So when you're applying varnish, you only want to apply one thin coat. So we're not at the beauty salon, ladies and gentlemen. You don't need three coats, okay? You just need a nice thin coat. So you just want to apply a nice thin coat. Okay, and I'm not overlapping. I'm just making sure that I get the entire tooth surface here. Nice thin coat. I'm wiping this off on my gauze. I'm gonna dip a little bit more. Okay, we're gonna go to the other side where you can see, okay? What I love about this is that it dries clear. You have that nice thin coat. Your patients will still feel like they have a film on their teeth and that's okay. Um, one of the most important things after applying varnish is to make sure you give your patients instruction, instructions. So, most people say, well, no, eating, drinking, or rinsing your mouth out for a half hour. Well, those are old instructions and that may be the case for our old varnishes or old rinses, but in this case, what you want to tell your patient is that they, they can drink, right? You just want to make sure that they avoid anything hot, anything alcohol-based. They want to avoid any foods that are crunchy, sticky, or chewy, typically for the next four hours. If you can, you want to make sure that your patients do not brush that night. The longer they're able to leave the varnish on the tooth, the better. But if not, it's okay. So another great thing about the Embrace Varnish line is that it does release a lot of fluoride, up to 10 times more than some of the leading brands. So you're gonna get a, a good initial burst of, of fluoride, okay? But you at least wanna make sure that it stays intact for those first four hours. Again, you don't have to apply it to the lingual surfaces, and again, it migrates into these interproximal surfaces. So not only will you have the benefit of the Embrace sealant, you now have that extra protection with the Embrace Varnish. So that's it for today. Um, if you have any questions about the Embrace product line, you definitely want to visit PulpDent at PulpDent.com, and they can also be followed on social media at PulpDent Corporation. Thank you.